Good morning, Flower Mound United Methodist Church. It is a joy and an honor to be in worship with you virtually this morning on this cold day that the Lord has made. Nevertheless, let us rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Reverend Taylor Smith. Joined with me today is my son, Lachlan. Lachlan, can you say hi to everyone? Maybe later. Uh, just a couple of announcements. As you are uh, well aware, we have uh, closed down the church to help keep everyone home and safe today, um, including as we're looking at the weather conditions later on this week, we have moved both of our Ash Wednesday services online. So there are two options for you to worship for Ash Wednesday. Those will be at noon and six o'clock p.m. online only. Uh, if you are looking for our Lent uh, in a jars, which have all of the materials you need to be able to impose ashes on yourself, as well as a little candle. They have been lost in transit because of the weather, and so please just stay tuned um, for updates on when those are available for you to uh, pick up this week from the church. Likewise, as we enter into the, se uh, the season of Lent uh, starting on Wednesday, I want to let you know of a couple of opportunities for you to continue your discipleship with the church. So number one, we will be kicking off a new sermon series called A Way to Pray, where we will be looking at a form of prayer called the Collect. The Collect has uh, five kind of segments of it, and each week we'll be walking through some of those segments, asking some intentional questions about your own prayer life, hoping that that will be uh, beneficial beneficial to your soul. Uh, likewise, our youth and children and young adults have put together a 40-day devotional that's filled with artwork and uh, reflections on different scripture passages uh, to help you journey through this liturgical season in the life of the church. And so you can download those online at fmumc.org forward slash Lent, or they are available for pickup in person. Just swing by the office between our business hours, or you can email us at office at fmumc.org. Last but not least, because it is so cold today and we're wanting to keep everyone safe, uh, all of our in-person activities have been canceled, but all of our online activities will continue um, as scheduled. So, uh, like I said, today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us indeed rejoice and be glad in it. Lachlan, can you say goodbye to everyone? Good morning, Flower Mounds United Methodist Church, and happy Valentine's Day to you. 
I hope this day finds you at home warm and safe, feeling as you are a beloved child of God. As we conclude the series on becoming, we have understood ourselves as ones who belong to God, are beloved by God, are blessed in God, and now today we discover what it means to be brave for God. And so we come to the scripture of Jesus before the Sanhedrin, before his crucifixion. Let us read together. Mark 14, we'll be reading verses 55 through 65. And I invite you to read along with me in your Bibles at home. Let us listen together for the word of God. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build up another, not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is this that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his test blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him to blindfold him and to strike him saying, prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This Valentine's Day, I remember the story of Valentine or Saint Valentine as he is known. There are actually three people known as Valentine, one being a priest in Rome, the second a bishop of Italy, and the third a martyr in the Roman province of Africa. We know that St. Valentine's martyrdom occurred about 269 AD, and we know from the story of Vorgine's golden legend that Valentine died for his faith on February the 14th. The story goes that he was brought before a trial of Emperor Claudius II. And that trial began because Valentine was one who continued to marry soldiers despite the fact that the Roman Empire had forbidden it. They had forbidden it because when you were a Roman soldier at that time, you served for about 25 years. And they had found that, of course, the soldiers did not want to be married in fear of being gone too long from their loved ones. But Valentine continued to believe in the power of human love bound by God. And so he was brought before the emperor who asked him, according to legend, why will you not live in peace by obeying my laws, worshiping the Roman gods and turning back on your God? Valentine looked up to the emperor and said for all to hear, if you knew about the grace of God, you wouldn't have asked me to deny him and worship your idols. Claudius was stunned and shouted, how dare you challenge me? As he sat on the throne, the emperor glared at the defiant priest standing before him and asked another question. Is Jesus God's son? Valentine smiled and with his face glowing with joy, he said, yes, 
Jesus is God's son. And if you believe in him, your soul will be saved. Claudius sat on his throne and thought about what Valentine had just said and suddenly stood up and exclaimed, this man's words made sense. What is wrong with G asking Jesus to save our souls? The chief prison guard named Marcus stood up and said, Emperor, you are being misled by the words of this criminal. Why should we turn our backs on worshiping the Roman God since this has been taught since we were children? Fearing his fate, Claudius changed his mind and cried, take this criminal away. He is to be put to death for breaking my laws. And so it was that Valentine was executed on February the 14th. When I think of bravery, I often think of stories of martyrs like Valentine, people who are so strong in their faith and convictions that they're willing to sacrifice their lives for it. We can count history of the many ways in which people have marked their faith by those kinds of moments. Images like the ones we heard this week in the trial of Eugene Goldman, who guided rioters away from the Senate chambers on January the 6th, or the history of Rosa Parks taking a seat on the bus, or the passengers of Flight 93 on 9-11 avoiding the Capitol, or Joan of Arc being burned at the stake. All of these are moments that we can look at and count as bravery decisive, clarified, sure moments of sacrifice that is extreme of self. Moments where words and actions are used for a larger purpose. The understanding of bravery as self-sacrificial is one that we often turn to as a Christian response, putting the lives of others in front of ourselves because this is agape love. Agape love of self-sacrifice that Jesus embodied on the cross. Now the trial of Jesus before the Sanhedrin as we hear it from Mark is yet another example of that extreme level of sacrifice for the love of God. In the face of false testimony and blasphemy, Jesus allows himself to be crucified and Jesus' example of bravery is seen in who he becomes in that moment. Jesus shows bravery by not exuding his own power and calling down angels to save himself. Jesus does not become angry or lead a riot to protect himself when falsely accused, but instead is silent. Jesus does not exert his own will, but in keeping with the prayer of the Garden of Gethsemane says, not thy will be done, but thine. There is a strength and a calm to Jesus' bravery, the courage of self-sacrifice, because he knows who he is. All of these acts of self-sacrifice exude courage because we know what the result of this trial is, don't we? It's the cross. And so when Jesus is asked, are you the Messiah, son of the blessed one, for those who are wanting him to affirm in order to accuse, he says... I am. The affirmative statement is an example of his connection to the great I am. That is the I am of the burning bush of Moses. The I am who sends Moses to Pharaoh to begin the story of Israel and his, their reliefs from enslavement. The I am who is the one who is their hope in the midst of the wilderness and captivity. The I am that the accusers of Jesus who are the highest Jewish officials would know and understand to be their God Yahweh whose name is so holy that it can't even be uttered aloud. And as we hear this, I am, we consider this statement to be an affirmation of Jesus, knowing who he is, the ultimate act of bravery. Now we might say to ourselves, 
that example of bravery is the one that counts. Knowing who you are and being willing to stand up for it no matter what. Knowing that you are a child of God, the beloved with whom God is well pleased. And we know we are. We know that we belong to God. We are beloved by God. We are blessed by God. And so we can certainly stand up in the face of adversity bravely and decisively in the midst of injustice and oppression, knowing and trusting in God's grace. There seems to be a sense of courage and of discipline with this decisiveness that's so very admirable. But what's so interesting, and maybe a little bit more relatable to me, perhaps to you, is the fact that in Mark's gospel, his writing actually does not word this to be solely a definitive statement. Instead, he offers an alternative translation in the ways he uses these words. For when Jesus is accused of blasphemy, proclaiming to be the Son of God, and responds with, I am, it can just as easily be translated to, am I? Am I? Jesus asks his accusers, am I the son of God? Who do you say that I am? It is this inquiry that Jesus has used throughout his ministry to invite those who are accusing and instead asking them into a moment of reflection. Who do people say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Peter, who we hear right before this scripture, is outside the courtyard of this trial, has been asked this question way back in the eighth chapter of Mark and has responded to Jesus that he believes he is the Messiah. But we know that Peter will be just as quick to deny Jesus. You see, it's that back and forth that I think a lot of us can actually relate to when faced with affirming or denying Jesus' activity in our lives, moments that ask us to be brave, just as Claudius has asked Valentinus, is Jesus God's son? It's these moments of inquiry that call us to be brave as they lead us into a new sense of becoming. I know that for me, and perhaps for you, there are probably more moments in my life where acts of bravery haven't been about what is said, but maybe what about I have questioned? Sometimes you see, I think it takes just as much bravery to ask the question as it does to have the answer. In this passage of Mark 14, as we look at the am I statement of Jesus, we'll consider bravery in a different way as a question. Bravery of all confident self-sacrifice becomes a willingness for us to question our self-understanding and vulnerability. In that, bravery becomes not about the knowing, but about the recognition that we don't know and our dependence upon the one who is all-knowing. Bravery becomes not about having all the answers, but rather about wanting to seek beyond our understanding, even when it risks us looking foolish for the sake of Christ. Bravery becomes not about feeling powerful or our responses being affirmed, but rather being willing to engage in a conversation that might offer an opportunity for transformation in the powerful presence of Christ. In this time and place in our day and age, I think it requires a lot of bravery to live in that in-between space. Going in between the I am of knowing who we are as beloved children of God and then asking the am I of questioning how we're living into the fullness of God's transformational love as a disciple of Christ. Am I? willing to question what I am now in order to become something new in Christ? Am I letting myself belong to God, be beloved by God, be blessed by God? 
Am I living into the power of the Holy Spirit in all of its fullness? And the more we start finding the balance between knowing who God is and who we are, the braver we can become. But it takes a lifetime, not just a moment, to be brave. And this, I believe, is the hope for all of us. And in this way, Christian bravery differs from worldly bravery. As, as Christians, we know who we are, and that allows us to become more brave over time rather than just in one circumstance. Bravery of the world might look like force or stoicism or unwaveringness. But bravery in Christ can be about becoming the balance of the God of I am that we find as our identity and the continual growing of the am I, the disciple of Christ I'm being called to become. So in the trials of life, for us as Christians, bravery can be found in those moments when we are accused of being something we're not. Knowing who we are as beloved children of God allows us to find the strength in those moments that who we are is not how we're defined by somebody else. Bravery can be found as releasing power rather than wielding it for our own self-importance. We accept that people have free will and we, and we can't change them, but only love them for who they are. Our bravery is in God's power in those moments and not our own. Bravery can be found even in silence of being vulnerable and willing to listen to God rather than filling a void with words that control and just let that space be. Bravery can be the moments, you see, where we feel the weakest, so God can be the strongest. This year, I am so thankful and excited about the ways that our congregation is opening itself up to be brave, to live into creativity and exploring the unknown and living into the God who needs us to become in response to the needs of our community. I was thankful for the bravery that I've already seen this week. So many of you quickly responded to bring meals and stay overnight and assist in hosting the warming and overnight uh, centers for our homeless brothers and sisters. Even though you didn't know what to expect, you stepped up and you said, even though this might be the first time you'd ever done something like this, that you trusted in who God was asking you to become. I'm thankful for the bravery of so many of you who have offered your time and your talents in this unexpected time of COVID and what it's called us to live into in our creativity and the unknown, whether it's on our media team or getting us online and help us to become a whole new church with a whole new audience of people and who are looking for faith and looking to be a disciple of Christ, that we're reaching in new ways. I'm thankful for the bravery of so many of you who I know have been struggling with depression and anxiety or addiction in this time and that you've woken up every day and just put one foot in front of the other and breathed in and out and said, I know God's going to be with me through this. Even though it was just another day, you've shown bravery by being in that moment. I'm thankful for the bravery that so many of you have shown in this time where you felt isolated and alone, that you've had the courage to listen in the silence for the still small voice of God sharing who you are more deeply. I'm thankful for the bravery so many of you are continuing to ask in the questions of Sunday school and small groups and that intersection of our faith and these tough topics that we're talking about of what's going on in our world. 
when you do all of this, you are living into the bravery of who God is allowing you to become. And friends, God is well pleased with you. Even in the most mundane of moments, you are claiming those as holy by your bravery. Our journey in this bravery never ends, my friends. It is a lifelong process and leads us into risk of sharing our journey with another person who might become a disciple of Christ. It takes us into deeper questioning and allows us to become who God leads us to be. Bravery is not just about heroic acts of self-sacrifice, as much as it is being willing to offer of ourselves every day of who we're becoming through God's continual presence and strength. And so in the many trials of our lives, may we live in the love that Jesus' sacrifice allows us to become as holy and beloved children of God. Amen. Friends, I invite us now to enter into a time of prayer. Oh, gracious and holy God, we know that you are calling us, calling us into bravery of becoming even more assured of your love. God, on this Valentine's Day, as we remember your self-sacrificial love, we give thanks and we praise you. We thank you for the ways in which you continue to just pour out your love upon us and we worship and we praise you in this moment. We know that the love that you have for us is enough. Enough for who you need us to become. And so in that assurance, dear Lord, may we be brave. May we be brave as we serve. May we be brave as we share. May we be brave in solidarity with you and those in need. God, we pray today for all of our homeless who are struggling in these days of inclement weather. And we pray that your blessings will be poured down upon them for safety and well-being. God, we pray for all of our nation who are struggling in the midst of this trial and pray that your love will be poured down upon us all to unite us in the strength in a way that only you can. God, we pray for our church that we might continue to become who you call us to be in each and every moment assured of our belovedness, belonging, and blessedness in you. For it is on all this, in the name of Christ, that we pray, as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now may you go from this place, even in the safety and the warmth and the assurance of your own home, to be brave in love. Through the assurance of God, the I am, through serving Jesus the Christ in self-sacrificial love, and through the power of the Holy Spirit that will give you all you need, may you be the love of Christ revealed in this world. Amen. i